Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to discuss how we draw scientific diagrams for the experiments that we carry out. So we're going to talk about firstly why would we bother? What's the purpose of a scientific diagram? Think about some of the rules that we follow when we're constructing a diagram like this and then um, illustrate an example. So firstly why would we bother? Well, when we carry out scientific experiments, it's important that we want to capture what it is that we actually did. We want it to be visible, we want it to be able to remember what it was, especially if it's a long time down the track when we're reviewing our work. And also, um, it, it, it makes it a lot easier for us to report what happened. So essentially, the diagram shows how lab equipment was set up. So, you know, this is a, a relatively complicated example called distillation. You can see that there's lots of different bits and pieces um, and you can't even see all of them in this photo. Um, but that being able to draw a diagram that simply and, and easily captures what was set up and where makes a huge difference, particularly because it then allows other scientists to repeat the experiment that we carried out. Okay, in the same way that if I was trying to teach you how to cook a particular recipe and the equipment needed to be set up in a very specific way, you, it would be important that you could see a photo of what I was doing or that you could see a, a, a drawing of what I, I did. Okay, that's the, the essential idea. So a scientific diagram we use for a particular purpose. So it has particular rules that we use when we're drawing one. So there's a handful of rules that you need to be really familiar with. Firstly, that we only do drawings in two dimensions. We don't do any 3D or, or kind of 3D drawings with shading and coloring and all that sort of thing. We just do simple 2D line drawings. We use a pencil and a ruler. So the lines that we draw are neatly ruled using a pencil so we can adjust any mistakes. We're using sim um, single kind of clear firm lines rather than kind of like rough and jaggedy sketchy lines. So that's where the pencil and the ruler come in. And make sure that pencil is nice and sharp. There's a pro tip for you. We also want our diagram to be adequate in size. So we need it to be big enough that we can clearly see its features, it captures all the detail and all of the parts are in the right proportion as well. So we don't have you know, test tubes being bigger than a retort stand, for example. Okay, so that things are in their right proportion and their right place, and it's nice and easy to see. And it's also important for us to label the equipment that we draw. And so we would be using neat printing alongside to, um, to, to print out the label of what it is, you know, beaker, Bunsen burner, retort stand. And then we connect that label to the item using a ruled line rather than an arrow. And so that line connects from the label to the item itself. Okay, so nice and neat, really easy to see what's what, especially because when we draw things in 2D that sometimes it can be a bit hard to, to, to see the features of it because we deliberately try to keep it simple. And so having a label means that we prevent any confusion. And, like, and then last kind of main sort of thing is that when we're drawing a container, like a beaker, like a test tube or a conical flask that is open at the top, that our diagram shows it to be open as well, rather than kind of trying to show a lip at the top of something like that, which makes it look like it's closed. Now, some containers we would use are closed, and so we need to make sure that, that the diagram reflects that as well. But most of the things you'd be dealing with are open containers, we would say. All right, so let me show you an example that I drew that um, illustrates some of these features. Okay, so here, so we've got a nice 2D drawing of um, a, a number of different items here. Okay, I tried to do my neatest handwriting over here, so if it's not neat enough for you, well, get used to it. Um, but this idea, so it's a nice 2D drawing. I've used a ruler. Now, in this case, I haven't used a pencil because I can't, I couldn't get the contrast to be good enough to see. But if it, it wasn't for this purpose, then it would be using a pencil so that I could adjust any mistakes. Um, so I've got all these items of equipment. I've used nice and neatly drawn lines. I've done it nice and big so you can see all of the detail, okay? And so we've got a retort stand. We've got a boss head and clamp connected to the retort stand and holding a thermometer, which is put in there. We have a beaker, which contains water. So you notice how the beaker here is open. Now this, is, this line here represents the water. It's the, the, the level of the water, not the top of the beaker. Okay, and I've also used a label to show the water. We've got it resting on top of a gauze mat and a tripod, which is above a Bunsen burner, which is resting on the bottom of the retort stand in this particular diagram. Okay, so I've used nice, neatly written labels over on the side, and I've used a line that extends from the label 
to the item itself and it touches the item as well. That's a convention that we, we try to follow. Um, just because it, it means that, especially when you've got a couple of things all next to each other, that it's easy to tell which is which. Okay, so nice neat labels, adequate size, 2D using a ruler and a pencil, and showing an open container, which is only only one of these items would count as, an, as a container in this case, but it's important that I drew it that way. Because if I drew a line across here, it would look like it was a closed box, and that gives the wrong impression. Okay. So we talked about why we draw scientific diagrams to allow other scientists to repeat our work and to capture what we happened. We went through the rules um, using 2D only, pencil and ruler, make sure that it's adequate size, labeling equipment using lines, not arrows, and drawing open containers, and showed you an example as well. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.